Hello all, welcome to part two of Cucumber Hybrid Framework. In this session, I'm going to continue the creation of Cucumber Hybrid Framework. Okay, so if you remember in the part one, I have created the Maven project with this template. Then we have created the feature files and we have installed this plugin and converted the project to Cucumber. And then we created the step definition methods without any code actually, okay? Now in this session, I'm going to implement these methods in the step definition classes. That is with Selenium code, I'm going to implement the methods in the step definition classes and uh, methods which got implemented in the previous part, okay? Let's start writing the Selenium code in this session. How to do that? For that, I'll open Eclipse ID, guys. If you remember, I created login register search and for each and every step in this uh, scenarios of this feature files, we created respective methods, right? So that's where that, that's what we have done. So I'll open the login dot feature. As you can see, all these steps got implemented already. Okay, I'll implement this first step, guys. User navigates to login page. Okay, user navigates to login page. How to implement? How to implement? Just press Control and click on this step. See whether it is taking you to the respective. You see login dot Java respective method. Okay, which got implemented for that step it has taken us to so what we are going to do here okay what we are going to do here we have to write the code guys okay user navigates to login page kind of code we have to write so to navigate to the login page first we have to open the application right for that we have to create some before hook method here okay so public void i'll say setup okay public void setup method i'll create on the top of this method i'll write at the rate before Okay, th this will become a before hook for the mouse and this particular uh, method will be executed before every scenario of this feature file. Okay, before every scenario of this feature files, this particular step will be executed. Okay, this particular method will be ex executed over the mouse on the other end before and import this uh, before from IO Cucumber. Done. What next we can do? So here, what is the first thing that we generally do guys in the setup means first we have to open the browser, how to open the browser. So for that, I need to create an object for the, okay, I need to create an object for the Chrome driver class and assign that object to the web driver interface. So here I'll write web driver, driver is equal to new Chrome driver. Okay, I'll write this, step. this will launch the Chrome browser. Fine. So hold the mouse on web driver, you see you're not getting any import statements. The reason behind that is, we have not added the Selenium library to this project. So let's first add the Selenium library to this project. Open the pom.xml file. And in this pom.xml file, scroll down and here, here add the dependency tags of Selenium guys. How to add the dependency tags of Selenium? Go to the uh, mbn repository.com and search for Selenium Java, okay? Selenium space Java you search for. Then you'll get this uh, Selenium Java. Click on the Selenium Java guys, you'll be taken here. You see the latest version we have is a 4.7.2 guys, okay? 4.7.2, click on that, uh, click on this and come back here and add the dependence. Fine. Add the dependencies of the latest version of Selenium Java, click on save all. So fine. So come back here to the login.java, hover the mouse, hover the mouse on this uh, web driver. This time, oh, okay, still building guys, let's switch, okay. It's not doing anything until this building process is completed. So let's wait for the building to complete, building process to complete. It's stuck at six, 62 actually. Let's see how it is going. Invoking Cucumber step definitions and something is coming, okay. Okay, hold the mouse now. Yeah, don't worry about this building, it is going on, that's okay. Over the mouse on this web driver and select import this web driver interface from Selenium library. Since we have added the library to the pom.xml file, we are getting that import statement. Over the mouse on this Chrome driver and click on import Chrome driver. That's it. Now click on save all again. Okay. Done. Now you see uh, in the latest versions of Selenium 4, guys, uh, that is from uh, this version, that is 4.6.0 version onwards. Uh, we have an inbuilt Selenium manager, guys, okay? You don't have to write any other statements before this, okay? Earlier, we used to write webdriver manager dot chrome driver dot setup, or earlier, we used to download the respective driver executable files and provide the system dot, uh, okay, set property like that. We used to write some statements, but uh, here, from Selenium 4.6.0 onwards, this statement is enough, guys, okay? It has an inbuilt, uh, you know, 
Selenium manager, which will take care of the drivers and all. Okay. So you don't have to manage anything else. Just write this step. This will open the Chrome browser. That's it. Okay. To make it simple. Earlier, we, we need some other steps uh, because this used to give an exception, illegal state exception, like that is some exception used to come earlier, but now it will not come yet because we got the Selenium manager inbuilt in the latest versions of Selenium 4 from 4.6.0 onwards. This statement is all enough. Now, the next thing is how to open the, uh, how to ma maximize the browser window, driver dot uh, manage, sorry, driver dot manage dot window dot maximize before even manage maximizing the uh, this uh, window driver dot manage dot delete all cookies okay if any cookies are there in the browser it will be deleted guys okay there is an optional statement but it's better to write okay it will delete the cookies in that session okay in existing cookies delete all cookies so fresh new browser will be opening up okay so maximize then uh, what else is there driver dot manage dot generally we give all this stuff as timeouts dot implicitly wait okay implicitly wait duration dot of seconds just give 10 seconds 10 seconds and finally we have to open the application url right we have to open the application url that is driver dot catch give the application url all this setup code i am writing in the setup method and the before who connotation so here are double quote and give the URL guys that you want to automate, which application you wanted to automate. This is application guys. Okay. Tutorials ninja.com slash demo application. Copy this URL and uh, paste that into the get command. That's it. Now this before hook method will be executed before every scenario of this feature file. Okay. So now similarly, we can create after hook method public void. Tear down, tear down or closure any name you can give guys okay this this method names are uh, user defined guys you can give any names and we generally in the industry they give tear down uh, setup and tear down kind of names okay so i'm following the same at the rate after over the mouse on at the rate after and uh, import this after okay from cucumber here i imported from cucumber okay that's fine this after hook method will be automatically executed after every scenario of this feature file. Okay. Before every scenario, before hook method will be executed. After every scenario of the feature file got executed, after hook will be executed. Guys. Okay. So I'll simply say driver dot quit here. Driver dot quit out right. Okay. This method I would write. But an error is coming because this driver is not identifiable. Because we have declared this driver locally in this setup method. So how can you access that outside the methods? That's not possible. Okay. In other methods, you cannot access this driver until and unless you make this like this. Okay. Web driver driver like this. Okay. Remove this. Uh, now simply say driver is equal to Chrome driver and all. Okay. Web driver 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 is equal to Chrome driver. Now you see you can access. Okay. Once you make it global, you can access. Fine. So before hook and uh, after hook methods are done. Now let's uh, implement the steps of this. Uh, Login dot feature file list step definition class login dot Java class user navigates to login page. You see before hook method will be first executed before any of these steps got executed. You see if you go to this login feature first this step will be executed. User navigates to login page. Okay, before this scenario, this before hook will be executed. Okay, this before hook will be executed, and after this scenario got executed, then after hook will be executed where you will close the browser. Okay, now when the scenario is getting executed. User navigates to login page need to be executed first. User navigates to login page. This is the one. So what should we write here? You see, before hook method is executed and uh, you see the application is opened in the browser like this. Then how to navigate to the how to navigate to the lag, login page? To navigate to the login page, I have to click on the my account and then select login option like this. Then we'll be taken to the login page, right? So by default, we'll be there on the Till the setup method, we are there on the home page. Okay, with this URL, we have to click on the my account. So I'll right click on this my account and inspect this my account option, guys. Once I inspect this my account, you can see here uh, we don't have an ID or something. Okay, so I'll copy this text my account, span tag with my account. So I'll create an XPath expression control F double slash span text is equal to my account in single quotes. Okay. You see one of one is coming and uh, my account option got selected. Okay. Highlighted. This is the XPath uh, expression for locating this my account. Uh, then I'll write driver dot find element by dot XPath provide the XPath of that my account options and say dot click. 
Once you click on this my account, you have to select this login option. Inspect this login option. This is a login, guys. This is a link text. You see, anchor tag is there, means text between the tags will become link text. So here, some simply write down driver dot find element by dot link text. Give the name of the link text that is login dot click. This will select the login option. Login option will be selected. Once the login option is selected, you will be taken to the login page. So user navigated to login page. User navigates to login page is completed, guys. Okay. These these are the two steps required for navigating to the login page. What is the next step then? User enters valid email address, uh, this particular valid email address into the email field. Okay. Just uh, click on this, you will be taken to the respective method. Okay, here, guys. Okay, it's taking here. User enters valid email address into the email field. Okay. So the whatever the from the step, whatever the email I'm passing, right? That email will come into this. One minute. That email will come into this spring and uh, it will come here into the email text. Okay. As a parameter. So what I have to do? This email, I have to enter into this email address field, inspect this email address field. It has an ID, guys. Copy this ID attribute value and simply write down driver dot find element by dot ID, right? ID. And here, provide the ID locator and say dot send keys command. You have to say send keys command and here email text you have to write. Done. Driver dot find element by dot ID send keys email text command you have to write. Next. User enters valid password into the password field. Okay. So the password will also come from the password is coming from here, guys. One, two, three, four, five is a password that will be passed to this uh, string and that will be coming uh, to this particular string and that will be passed to this parameter. Okay. Password text. Here I have to write driver dot find element and I have to inspect this password field and it also has an ID. Copy this ID. Come back here and say uh, by dot ID, provide the ID. And say dot send keys dot send keys. So here you have to give password text. This step is also implemented now. The next one. What is the next one? Here user clicks on login button. So after entering the email password, user user clicks on login button. Okay. So let's implement this login button. That is uh, here after entering the valid email address and valid password one two three four five. User has to click on the login button. Inspect this login button, guys. Uh, input tag with the value login is there. I'll create an XPath expression. I'll copy this login. Uh, double slash input uh, at the rate value is equal to login. Okay. At the rate value is equal to login. I'll write down. You see, it's locating this login button, the XPath expression. Copy the XPath expression. And uh, here, write down driver dot find element by dot XPath provide the XPath expression of that login button and say dot click. Okay, click on the login button. User should get successfully logged in. Okay, once you click on the login button, what should happen? User should get successfully logged in. How to verify that user got successfully logged in? One of these options, okay, which are not available for non-logged in users should be verified. Okay, here edit your account information is the option. So user should get logged in. Okay, this is the step guys we have to implement. User should get successfully logged in. So how to verify this? So for that, guys, uh, I'll write a statement here. Okay, I'll write a statement, guys. That is uh, some assertion I'll use. Okay, uh, in uh, JNIT also we have assertions. Uh, in the asset class of JNIT, this is asset class of JNIT, guys. Over the more than asset dot, you just say first. Okay, assert true. Assert dot assert true from JNIT assertion. You see asset class from JNIT library. Select that. For now, we have the JNIT in this uh, project. So asset dot asset true. And here we have to give the statement driver dot driver dot find element. What is this option you want to ver verify? Any option you see, you see you can you can give any option. You see edit your account information is option will not be available for non logged in user. If you verify this that this option is displayed on the page, then that confirms that user got successfully logged in. Okay, I'll inspect this option. Any of this option you can change change your password. You can take modify your address book entries. You can take modify. Your wish list to any option you can take as inspect this. Okay. So this is a link text. Copy this link text and say here write on by dot link text. Provide the link text in double quotes and simply say at the end, simply say dot is displayed. Okay. If this if this option is displayed, means it will return true and assert true will happen. If true, true comes, means the test will pass. Okay. Assertion will pass. Ultimately, the test will pass, right? If nothing fails, test will pass. Okay. But if this option is not coming on the page, means user not 
user has not got successfully logged in okay so you uh, login got failed with even with valid credentials okay that kind of thing and test will fail okay that's a scenario we completed automating one scenario for now guys okay let's automate the remaining uh, scenarios also it will be kind of easy guys because first scenario will take a lot of time remaining scenarios won't take much time okay so most of the things already got automated you see user navigates to login page is already implemented here user enters invalid email address is not implemented okay user enters invalid email address into the email field how to write that driver dot find element by dot uh, uh id here i have to provide the id of that uh, email address field log out go to the login page and here email address field we already have uh, inspected this one right id will be there copy this id and here write down this id and say dot send the keys provide the invalid uh, email text here okay that's it guys nothing much and what is the next one invalid uh, password for the second scenario we have the invalid password okay so invalid password uh, we'll get the invalid password here and here and that need to be typed here driver dot find element by dot uh, id provide the id of that uh, password field inspect this so i'll get the id of the password field and say dot and this this invalid password text will enter here done then user uh, should get a proper warning message about credentials mismatch okay then user clicks on login button which is already implemented here guys don't need to implement again user should get a proper warning message about credentials mismatch okay okay so how to do that you see if you give uh, invalid email address for example invalid email address and some invalid password and click on the login button immediately you will get warning some warning message okay we have to verify this warning message guys. okay how to verify that warning message inspect this guys inspect this you see there is a due tag here there is a due tag here it's, uh, for locating this uh, thing inside that we have the warning message inside this due tag we have partially we have some text like warning no match for email address and password we have to verify this how to verify that alert alert danger alert dismissible three things are there I'll go with either disable, uh, I'll say double, uh, double forward slash due class. Okay. And the, uh, contains at the right class alert dismissible. I only this portion I'll take. Okay. There are three classes here. Alert is one class. Alert danger is another class and alert dismissible is another class. I'll take only one class. I'll see whether it is working fine or not. Double slash due contains at the rate single quotes you see whether uh, one of one and it's locating this uh, you see this section okay inside this due tag we have this text copy this xpath expression which is locating this warning message double dot find element uh, here uh, we'll write an assertion you see user should get a proper verification is being done okay so assert dot assert assert dot assert true i'll write okay assert dot assert true from where I am getting this JNIT, it should be from JNIT for now. Here I'll write down driver dot find element by dot spot dot get text. I will say it will retrieve the text, guys. Okay. One minute. Dot get text. It will retrieve the text between the new tags guys from here, including i tag also. Everything will be retrieved from here to here. It will be retrieving and it should contain this warning. Text, okay. I'll say dot contains string method. This is contains a string method here, double quotes and provide this particular text guys. Okay. This particular text should be there in the warning message. That's it guys. This is also automated. Let's move on. This entire uh, framework along with this uh, live project scenarios, I'll be sharing at the end of guys. Okay. I'll share this in the last session. Okay. So be there. If you see the last session, you will get all this code. Okay. I'll, I'll give you some GitHub URL or something where from where you can download this project. So user navigates to login page is done. User enters valid email address into the, it is already completed. User enters invalid password already completed. User clicks on login button completed. User should get a proper warning message about credentials mismatch completed. User navigates to login page, enters invalid email. This is completed now, first of all. Yeah, this is completed. Invalid email address completed. Valid password completed. User clicks on login button. 
as part of the previous session, all these steps are already implemented. We don't have to implement again. User should get a warning message. Done. User navigates to login page. User don't enter email address into the email field. Okay. If you go here, user don't enter means don't enter anything guys, or you just give it blank if you want. Okay. You don't have to write the steps, but uh, if, if you still want to write, you can write. Okay. Inspect this email address. Uh, you'll get this uh, ID. Copy this ID of this email address field and simply say driver dot find element by dot ID. Provide the ID of that email address field and say dot selling each. But don't enter anything. Simple. Okay. Keep this uh, send case empty or give nothing here. Okay. So nothing will be entered into the email address field. Similarly, nothing should be entered into the password field. This is the password. Copy this password ID and here write out. This is not compulsory, guys. So you can implement this step or you can keep this blank also. If you don't want to keep it blank, you can write like this. Okay. By dot ID. Provide the ID of the password field. As user don't have to enter anything into the password field, send keys. You double quote without anything that will be enough. Okay. So all the steps in this uh, step definition class of this login feature file got implemented, guys. Okay. Got implemented. Similarly, we'll implement other other uh, feature files also. The steps for other feature files that is register dot feature file. We'll implement this uh, scenario starting with four scenarios are there. If you completed the first scenario, remaining three scenarios will not take much time. Okay. So here uh, we have to go to the register dot Java. Here we have the steps. You don't have to write at the rate before and at the rate after books here because they're already written inside of the login dot Java. They will be applicable for register guys. Only write before hook and after hook in any of the step definition classes only once guys. Okay. It's not required for you to write at the rate before who can edit the rate after hook in each and every class. Okay. That's not required here. Okay. So that before hook and after hook, after hook methods, which I created for the login dot Java will be applicable for all these classes. Okay. All these uh, scenarios of all the feature files, guys. Okay. Only one, you can write them in register. You can write them in search, but only one time you have to write. Okay. One place you have to write. Anyhow, that uh, application you are will open user navigates to register account page, user navigates to register account page. How do how the user nav once the user is taken to this uh, application URL, how the user navigates to the uh, register account page, user clicks on my account. Inspect this. Already we created an expert expression, but I'll create again double slash span. Uh, uh, text function is equal to text function is equal to give the text function. Okay. Copy this and uh, write down here driver dot find element by dot driver dot find. Uh, okay. It's not coming here. What may be the problem is why it's why this particular thing is not coming here. Okay. So I cannot write driver dot find element because you see, even though this, uh, this thing I have created here, web driver driver is here guys. Okay. So all these steps are here. So how can I, how can I write the things here? Okay. Because, uh, these are parallel classes. Okay. So how can we overcome this problem? So that's the problem guys. Okay. That's the problem. So we'll deal with this. Okay. We'll deal with this with uh, some solution. So what we are going to do here is, uh, before we start writing some Selenium automation code here, let's work on this framework a bit. Okay. To overcome that problems. So here, if you go to this login dot Java, this before hook and after hook are written inside this login class. So I don't want to write them inside the login class. I want to do some changes guys. I don't want to write this kind of stuff inside the login individual step definition classes. So I'll create a P package. Okay. New package, right click new. I'll just name this as package. I just I'll create a package and just name it as hooks package. Okay. You can give any name for this package. I'm just giving hooks. Click on finish. And here I'll right click on this hooks and uh, create a new class, say my hooks. So in this hooks class, I'll be creating that methods. Okay. Before annotation method, before hook and after hook public wide setup. I'll write down okay. and here I'll write down at the rate before annotation Okay, for the most done here, public wide, public wide tear down here. I'll write at the rate after for the most import this from Kukumbar. Okay. So what will be there in this before and after I'll tell you, okay, before going there, we have to do something guys. Okay. We have to do something. 
I'll tell you how to make them global. I'll tell you. Okay, these steps should not be there here inside this uh, any of the step definition classes. We'll move to the high level. Okay. So here also I'll not write the Selenium code. I'll be writing that in a separate uh, class. Okay. I'll create a new package, guys. I'll create a new package. I'll say uh, driver factory. Or you can give that as factory name. Okay. Uh, it will be easy to remember. Okay. So right click on this package name and say refactor rename. And just give the name as uh, say okay. So say okay. And say give factory here. Say okay. Just give a small name, better factory. And here create a new class. Say driver factory. Driver factory kind of class I'll be creating. And inside that class, I'll create I'll be creating a method. Okay. I'll be creating a method. Public static method I'll create guys so that I can access these things. Okay, using the class name. I'll simply say public static. Why for no? I'll say initialize browser, I'll say. Okay, initialize browser. Or initialize driver also, you can see. Browser also, you can see. Initialize browser, I'll say. So, this method should be called and here, okay, we'll go step by step, don't worry. So what I'm going to do is initialize browser, I'll say. Then I'll be writing some code here. How to implement a lot of things in this framework, guys. Okay, step by step, why I'm, I'm thinking to do it step by step, but for now I'll pass the browser name, guys, okay? Browser. We are will hard code the browser name for a while. Okay, so that's a problem, not a problem. Initialize browser. Whatever the browser name is passed, that's okay. So here I'll write down. If that browser name dot equals if it is Chrome, if it is Chrome browser. Okay, if it is Chrome browser, I'll be writing web driver, driver is equal to new Chrome driver. Pour the mouse on this web driver and import it from Selenium library. Pour the mouse on Chrome driver and import it from Selenium library. Else if browser name dot equals, if it is Firefox, if it is Firefox browser, then you will be writing web driver driver is equal to new Firefox driver. If it is Firefox browser, then Firefox driver. Import this Firefox driver from Selenium. Else if browser name dot equals if it is Edge browser, then I'll write down for now only three browsers I'll put web driver driver is equal to new Edge driver. That's it. Okay. Three, three, uh, three browsers I give. You can give Safari and all, all remaining if you want. Okay. Else if browser name dot equals if it is Safari browser, then it will be like this. Web driver driver is equal to new Safari driver. Done. For the mode on the Safari driver and import the Safari driver from Selenium library. Then I have to write the code here. Initialize browser we are, we are saying here. Initializing the browser we are saying. So what else we can do? For now this much. So we need to return this uh, driver. Okay. We need to return this driver to this calling statement. Initializing the browser statement. So how to initialize, uh, how to return that? I'll say return driver here. I'll say return driver. This particular driver I want to return. So what I'll do is, uh, how to make it global, right? Then only I can return this driver. How to make it global? Here I'll make it global, okay? 
So here, web driver driver, I will not declare inside the if block. I will just declare it here. Local declaration is not required anymore. Okay, remove this. Okay, done. Return driver means the return type should be web driver. Okay, web driver. Done. This part is done. We are returning the driver. And uh, here we are still getting the error because uh, we have to initialize this with null, then only it will go off. Initialization, you see the error is gone. Okay, so whenever you call this method, it will return you the driver guys. Okay, it will return you the driver. Fine. So who will call this method? Initialize browser method. If you go to the my hooks here, I'll be writing some code that is driver factory dot initialize browser like this. Okay, I'll call this method. And here we have to pass a browser name. Let's say if you give Chrome, means only Chrome browser will be called. Okay? Chrome browser will be launched. Okay, so you can choose the browser name here. Over the mouse on initialize browser, it will return you the web driver. Okay, here write web driver guys. Okay, web driver driver. Web driver driver is equal to over the mouse import this. Okay. Then we can write the remaining setup code here. What is the setup code we have? So this before and after we don't require actually. Okay, these steps, all these steps I'll copy paste, cut okay from here and paste into the myux like this. It'll be gone. And here driver.pit also will come from the login.java. This driver.pit from here to here it will come. Here we'll get an error because it's not a kind of thing. Okay. Fine. What else we can do? Web driver driver before hook, after hook is done. Web driver. Okay, this part is done. So I'll remove this login.java from here. All this code I will remove. It's not required. Now still there is a problem like driver is not accessible here. Okay. Driver is not accessible here, guys. Okay. So I'll do one thing. I'll just uh, create one more method here. So this will initialize the driver, but uh, to get the driver, I'll have to call a method, okay? So here I'll create a method public void, get driver. Wherever you want to get the driver, you can get it, okay? That's the thing. Wherever you want to get the driver, you can get it, okay? Get driver, I'll say. We have to initialize the browser and once initialized, we have to get the driver. So uh, it should return the driver, guys. But if I try to return the driver, it is not able to return because this driver is local. I'll take this step outside directly under the class input. Okay. Here, this should be, this is static method, right? This should be static, guys. otherwise you'll get an error. Okay. If you give static here, that's okay. Here also give static. Okay. Then errors will be gone. Web driver driver is equal to some driver is assigned. We don't know what is the driver. We don't have to return the driver here using this method. I want to return the driver public static void. I will say this is only for initializing purpose. But uh, if someone wants a driver, yeah, I'll if they have to call this method, okay, return the driver of this class, return the driver of this class, okay. Wherever you want the driver, you can call this method, guys. Okay, that's the advantage. So I'm just making it flexible. So you see in the hooks, first of all, I want this driver in the hook. So here I will not get the driver. I just can initialize this. But if you want to get the driver, you have to say driver factory dot get driver. Okay. This will get you the driver, guys. This will get you the driver. You see, driver is coming. So driver is equal to you right now. And then all these steps are done. Everything is fine. Now again, you, you want the driver in this login.java. So how to get this driver here? Right on driver factory dot get driver. This will get you the driver guys. Okay. This will get you the driver. You can see here get driver will get you the driver here. Right on web driver driver. And uh, here say driver is equal to errors will be gone. You can access the driver now. Okay. So this is a framework level code. You have to write guys. Okay. Just create my books. Okay. And whenever you want to get the driver from the driver factory, you can get by calling this method, you can get it. Okay. Close this stuff. 
Okay. Let's see what will happen if any problems come. So we'll see. So. Okay, we are getting the driver and all. Mm -hmm. Hooks methods, initializing is done, driver we are getting. Yeah, all the steps are implemented. Similarly, in the register.java also, first step should be driver factory dot get driver. This will get you the driver. Here, write down web driver driver is equal to driver. Your driver is equal to you write down. Okay. Import this web driver from Selenium. Then user navigates to register account page. How the user navigates to register account page? Here we have to write the code, right? Inspect this uh, my account. Uh, already we created the XPath expression for the my account. Copy this and simply write down the code here. Driver dot manage dot sorry, uh, driver dot find elements dot by dot XPath. Provide the XPath expression of that my account and say dot click. Once you click on this my account, you will get this options. You have to select the register option, inspect this, this is the link text. Copy this, write down driver dot find element by dot link text between the anchor tags, right? So you have the link text dot click. So we have implemented this user navigate to register account page now. Then what is the next step? User enters the details into the below fields. User enters the details into the below fields, this particular table. Here data table is there. We'll get this from this table, first name, last name, and all. So how to write that, how to take advantage of this. You just copy this data table here and say dot. Just say as map. Okay, you just have to select this as map string of string. Here write on string dot class, comma, string dot class. Put a semicolon. That's it. This will return you map of string string. Okay. So here write on map is equal to data map. Otherwise you can write data map is equal to over the mouse and say create local variable map of string string will come. Now with the help of this map, we can get the data from this uh, feature file step. Okay. Now write down the code driver dot after navigating to the register account page, we have to enter these fields first name. Okay. Inspect this first name field. ID is there for the ID ID attribute is there for the first name. Copy this ID attribute value and say dot by dot ID. Provide the ID of that uh, first name field and say dot send the keys. And here, what is the value we have to provide? The value is nothing but this Arun, which is coming from this uh, scenario. Okay. So from the data table, copy this first name, guys. Copy this first name. Okay. And then come back here and write down data map dot get off the key name. What is the key name? That is first name. Just now I copied right from here. I copied this first name. That is a key. It will get the value. What is the value? Arun. Arun will be entered into which field? First name field like that. Okay. And driver dot uh, driver dot next last name field. Okay. Second one is last name field. Okay. ID is there for this last name field. Copy this ID. It's copy and write on by dot ID. By dot ID, provide the ID of the dot set keys. Write on data map dot get off. What is the key name we have to give here? This one, last name. Okay, it will get your map motor will be entered into the last name. We'll copy this and paste it here. That's it. Then Write down the next field after entering the Arun here and the motor here. Email address. Here ID is there. Copy this ID. Say so driver dot find element by dot ID. Codes and provide the ID at ID locator of that email address field dot send keys. And say data map dot get off. Here from email also we are passing from here. Copy this email. This email address will be entered into that email address field. Double quotes, provide that email address field. It's also done. 
okay next for the next one after entering the email address let's say this is the email address we are entering let's see what is the email address we are entering this is the email address right so copy this email address and paste it here then here telephone number inspect this telephone id is there copy this id write the code driver dot find element by dot id dot send send keys write data map dot get off double quotes you just give that key what is the key you want to give telephone copy this telephone key and double quotes paste it for the next one we have password okay here we have entered the telephone that is one two three four five six seven eight nine zero no password inspect this password id id is there copy this id attribute value of this password field and simply write down driver dot find element by dot id provide the id dot send keys data map dot get off copy this password and paste it here next one after entering the password here, one, two, three, four, five. These steps, you see, for first scenario, we have to do the hard work. Test. There is no other, no other way. Okay. From second scenario, most of the steps will be implemented. One or two steps we have to implement. Okay. Inspect this password field. Uh, I mean, password confirm field. This is the ID of the password confirm field. Write down driver dot find element by dot ID. Provide the ID. Dot send keys. Same thing you can give. Okay. Done. So all these steps got implemented till here and user selects privacy policy. User selects privacy policy. How user selects the privacy policy after entering this uh, confirm password. User has to select the privacy policy, inspect this privacy policy and here input. Otherwise name is there, name agree is there. Copy this name attribute value and uh, here user selects privacy policy is there. Driver dot find element by dot. Uh, name right name locator provide the name then say dot click okay this is done next one user clicks on continue button okay inspect this continue button here value continue is there copy this value double slash input at the rate value is equal to continue if i write an extra expression like that the rate uh, value is equal to continue enter you see the button is getting located one of one is coming that's why Copy this XPath expression. Come back here and write down driver dot find element by dot XPath. Use the XPath expression of that continue button here and say dot click. Click on the continue button. Once you click on the continue button, user account should get created successfully. How to verify that? Click on continue button. Account. Email is already started. Give, give some other email address and click on continue button. Okay. User account has been created successfully, guys. Okay. You'll get this uh, page. And on this page, this heading should be displayed. Okay. This heading proves that your account has been created successfully. How to verify this? User account should get created successfully. How to write this? Assert dot assert equals write some method here from JNIT. J unit dot framework dot assert yeah uh no no you should not take from framework guys you have to take from org jnit okay whenever you get two suggestions like org dot jnit assert or jnit framework means framework you should not select okay assert equals just take a normal jnit assert okay so take something and hover the mouse on this it should come from jnit asset okay org dot jnit asset okay not from framework here we have to give something else, okay? We have to give something. Mm, which one is expected? This is expected. This is actual, okay? Expected, what you are expecting here? Asset equals, you are expecting this particular heading text. Give that text here. What is actual? We have to retrieve the actual. How to retrieve the actual thing? You can write the things here, guys, okay? Inspect this. Inspect this. We'll get this uh, H1 under the ID content. Only one H1 will be there, I guess. I'll inspect this. I'll say Control F. 
double slash h1 if i say one of two are coming okay so this is not the one this is the one under id content it is there copy this id uh, double slash u at the rate id is equal to slash h1 over the mouse you see this uh, expired expression is coming copy that and write down here driver dot find element by dot xpath view the xpath expression from that heading where the uh, where the text is there in the in between the text dot get text you have to say dot get text this particular text should match with your account has been created okay this is the assertion statement so this automation is done for this uh, one of the scenario. So next scenarios will not take much time. This user navigates to register account page already implemented. User enters the details into the below fields already implemented. User selects, this step is not implemented. User select S for newsletter. This step is not implemented. It's how to select that. Logout. Logout register. This step is not implemented. Inspect this uh, radio button, S yes, radio button. And here, value is equal to one, okay? Name newsletter, value is equal to one is there. Copy this newsletter option. Double slash input. Double slash input at the rate, name is equal to. And at the rate, value is equal to. So copy this. And uh, write down, driver dot, find element by dot. Xpath, provide the Xpath expression of that uh, S radio button and say dot click. This will select the radio button. And uh, user, this is already done. Our user account should get created successfully also, also done, already done. Now user creates a duplicate account, okay? The third scenario we are automating. Like this will complete all the scenarios, guys, okay? All the scenarios and all the feature files will implement one by one. User navigates to register account page already implemented. User enters the details. All these details are already done. Yes, for newsletter is done. Privacy policy is done. Click on continue button is done. But uh, here, the same email address is entered every time. User should get a proper warning me a message about the duplicate email. Okay. So here I'll give a di different email address. Say hey, motori cap nine at gmail.com. I'll give. This email address, when you pass, it is a duplicate email, which already an account is there with this email address. Okay? So, so when you try to create an account with an existing email address, which is already, uh, for which uh, account is already created, for example, this email address for which account is already there. If you try to create the account again, you'll get duplicate email address or email already exists kind of thing. Okay. Just click on continue. You'll get a message. Email address is already listed. This warning message we have to verify. How to verify that? Copy this uh, and uh, go to these steps here, guys. Okay, assert dot assert. Who I'll write down from where I'm importing this or dot jnet assert. Okay, that's fine. Driver dot find element here. Inspect this. Already we created this kind of expert expression. Remember, alert dismissible, right? Copy this part here. I'll write down double slash do contains contains at the rate class comma view that value square bracket copy this part you see this locating this uh, value by dot path provide the xpath expression and say dot get text dot contains what is the text that should be containing this is the text warning email address is already registered kind of text should be verified okay this this step is also implemented guys okay let's move to the next one last scenario of this feature file user navigates to register account page is already implemented user don't enter any details into the fields okay user don't enter anything into this fields okay so this uh, intentionally 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 kept blank because you don't have to enter anything means uh, why to write unnecessary selenium statements right uh, this is intentionally kept blank this uh, method okay then if you user doesn't enter anything after user navigates to register account page and if the user doesn't enter anything and click on the continue button directly this method is already implemented user should get a proper warning message for every mandatory field okay so here is the work we have to do after clicking on the continue button you'll get all these warning messages you have to verify all each and every warning message here 
how to verify these warning messages that you are getting here when you don't when the user don't uh, enter anything and try to create an account so we'll write something here okay clicks on continue button already implemented right clicks on continue button user clicks on continue button okay here normal clicks is there their user clicks is there this i'll copy and uh, here i'll paste it guys you see a small word change it will create a duplicate method okay another method this method is not required okay then user should get a proper warning message for every mandatory field that i am writing here the code all assert statements we have to write here first we'll verify for privacy policy inspect this uh, here we are getting on the alert dismissible okay so this is uh, a thing here we'll write down assert dot assert true assert dot assert true driver dot find element by dot xpath provide the xpath expression of this you see already we created the xpath expression for this warning message copy this and uh, paste that xpath expression and say dot get text dot get text dot contains this string method contains and here in double quotes you provide this message warning you must agree to the privacy policy just write down here one assertion is done here i'm going to write multiple assertion phase to verify multiple things okay copy this inspect this first of all you see, uh, we have to locate this particular due tag containing this text and retrieve this text and verify. Okay. So how to do that? For that, I have to take the help of this uh, field. Okay. ID having some ID. Copy this. Double slash input at the rate ID is equal to. I'll create an XPath expression. Double slash due at the rate ID is equal to. Provide the ID of that. Okay. It's not locating. Huh? I'll inspect this again. Uh, that is input tag, right? I was writing the due tag, double slash input at the rate ID is equal to give that ID. Now it is locating, but it is locating the field guys. We have to look, uh, we have to locate this warning message. Okay. Okay. That warning message is nothing but a sibling. Okay. So I'll write iPhone following iPhone forward slash following iPhone sibling colon colon you tag okay you see now it's locating the warning message text okay this xpath which is locating the warning message of this first name field copy this uh, and then say assert dot assert equals i'll write equals guys okay take it from let's provide circular brackets here over the mouse i'll write comma Take string comma string thing. Here provide. Uh, here first expected should come, then actual should come. Expected is what? What is the expected, guys? In double quotes, give the expected value. What is the expected value? This is the expected value. Copy this and paste it here, guys. And what is the actual one? We have to retrieve that. Using this XPath, we can retrieve this. Between the text tags, due tags, it is there, first name and all. So copy this xpath expression and write down driver dot find element by dot xpath provide the xpath expression and say dot get text that's it done the remaining statements will be almost same so dot asset equals this is the message last name must be between 1 and 32 characters i'll copy paste this one here and here in place of this xpath expression i have to give a different xpath expression so how to give that inspect this and uh, this one is uh, id input last name field copy this input last name field and remaining all will be same okay it's locating you see it's locating the last name copy this and replace this xpath expression with your new xpath expression okay, take this part and paste it done like this, all the warning messages I'm going to verify. Okay. Spec this. Input email. Copy this. Copy this part. Is it locating? No, it's not locating. Double slash input at the rate. Uh, 
input email only, right? Single quote is missing here. Copy this and write down assert dot assert assert dot assert. Let's minimize this so that we can see it big. Equals here double code you provide. And here write down driver dot find element by dot xpath. Provide the xpath of uh, address of that. And say dot get text. And here this side you write down the text. Okay. Next one is this one. Inspect this part. ID. Copy this ID, create an XPath expression. The previous XPath expression, you provide this ID, that will be working fine. Is it locating? No. Telephone. Now it's locating. Yes. Copy this XPath expression and write down assert dot assert equals here, write down driver dot find element by dot xpath provide the xpath expression and say dot get text warning text of the telephone field will be retrieved and here provide double quotes and provide this particular text done any other warning messages are there yeah last warning message is left out this one guys okay we'll inspect this input password paste it Copy this, then again, assert dot assert equals driver dot find element by dot xpath. Provide the xpath expression of that uh, then say dot get text semicolon here at the end and uh, here in double quotes give the text this particular text done so we automated guys successfully implemented all the steps okay steps of this uh scenarios of the restart feature file all implemented now let's go to the search dot feature which is the last one which won't take much time guys it's very simple let's implement this completely and then we'll think about other things. Okay, register.java. Okay, sorry, not register.java, search.java we have to open. And we have to implement these steps. So first of all, here, user opens application. For that, we have to first get the driver, guys. Driver factory dot get driver. It will return you the driver. Simply say web driver. Driver. Here say driver is equal to this is enough. Okay. This will get the driver. Okay. This will open the application URL also. Import this. Till here, application URL is open. Next one is user opens application is done. User enters valid product into the search box field. This method we have to implement. Valid product text is there here. Into the search box field, guys. Okay. User opens application. And user enters valid text that is HP into the search box field. Okay, for that I'll inspect the search box field. And this has a name. Copy this name. Driver dot find element by dot name. Provide the name. Dot set keys. Give this text valid product text. Done. Let's copy this text and give it here done then after entering the valid user clicks on search button here we have to write this is the search button inspect this see we have to create an xpath expression for the search button okay so how to do that uh, let's take this part double slash button button at the rate uh, contains button contains at the rate class comma, view that class button LG. 
is it locating how many buttons one of two are coming so we should not be taking button uh, button default i will take btn default how many are coming one of one is coming and that is nothing but the search button you see for button default there are three classes here you can try with each and every class to identify the pro proper class unique class which is locating only this button one of one is coming then fine okay copy this driver dot find element by dot class name sorry by dot uh, xpath give the xpath expression of that button and say dot click next user should get valid product displayed in the search results so type hp and click on the search button valid product should be displayed in the search results in fact this the link text copy this here write down assert dot assert true assert dot assert true j init assert uh, driver dot find element by dot link text right by dot link text provide the link text done dot is displayed out right okay then it's fine so the first scenario is automated we'll go with the second scenario guys user opens application is already automated here user enters invalid product okay this one we have to automate user enters invalid product so where the user enters into the search box field okay inspect this so it has name copy this name it's a driver dot find element by dot name give the name locator dot send keys give this invalid product text here that's it now user clicks on search button which is already implemented in the above step and uh, user should get a message about no product matching text okay when you give something like Honda here which is not available in this application click on search button in the search results you'll get this message there is no product that matches the search criteria inspect this message okay here id is there copy this id for button search double slash input at the rate id is called button search double slash input the rate id is equal to button search so under this uh, there is a sibling known as paragraph sibling so you have to say slash following iphone sibling colon colon p this will locate this okay copy this part and come back here write down drive out of find element by dot x path provide the x path expression okay so this one I'll write inside, you know, uh, I'll write inside assert equals, okay, assert dot assert equals kind of stuff. I'll copy this. I'll write assert dot assert equals. This is from J init assert, that's fine. This expected one, double quotes, provide the expected value. There's no product that matches such criteria. Actually, is this part, guys, okay? We are, whatever we are writing here is actual. I'll cut it and paste it here. Driver dot find element by dot x path dot uh, get text. Okay, this will retrieve the text and uh, it should match with that. Okay. Last one, last scenario that is user opens application is already implemented. User don't enter any product name into the search box field. So this one you can in, uh, you can uh, write down like this this method intentionally kept blank okay. you can write this you can fill a statement also without entering anything into that field then if user don't enter anything here and clicks on the search button what should happen again the same message should come there is no product that matches which is already implemented okay this step is already implemented user should get a message about no product match is already implemented so all the scenarios of this uh, third feature file are also implemented now now let's run this uh, feature file space how to run these feature files for that i need to right click on this src test java and create a new package i'll name this package as runner package under this runner package i'll create a package a uh, class known as my runner class for now okay my runner click on finish and here in the my runner, this is a runner class, guys. Okay. On the top of the my runner, I'll provide run with annotation from JNIT Cucumber. I think this is from JNIT. Okay. JNIT runner, you see. 
import this and here write down circular brackets write down cucumber dot cucumber dot class cucumber is imported from cucumber jnit okay let's see cucumber jnit jnit cucumber this is run with imported from jnit directly so now just above this in between this at the rate run with and this class right at the rate cucumber options cucumber options over the mouse on cucumber options and import this uh, cucumber options from cucumber jnit and here write down uh, first write uh, where the feature files are available feature is equal to double quote where the feature files are available under src test resources src slash test slash resources slash features pack features uh, folder okay this is features case, not feature, features. Features is equal to this is the one. Okay. Then put a comma and press enter. Just organize it properly so that uh, you know. Here write down something. Next one is uh glue, glue attribute. Write curly braces, provide curly braces and provide one double code here and provide the path of uh, package name of the step definitions okay under src test java we have this step definition class under step definitions only type the package name guys okay step definitions okay then comma where the hooks are available hooks you also have to give the path of these hooks my hooks under the hooks package double quotes and give the package name that is hooks okay we are gluing these feature files with this uh, hooks and step definition classes okay that means so once this is done Okay, this much is fine for now. We'll implement other things later anyhow. Okay, so let's see whether we can run this runner class or not, okay, where which is integrating this feature files with this uh, step definition signed hooks. Let's see whether our tests are running or not. Right click, run as JNA test. Browser has launched. Application URL is open. Working fine so far. Browser got closed. One scenario is completed, guys. Second scenario, login. Login related things are running. Third. You see, this is not closing the browser. Okay, there is a problem here. It will wait for 10 seconds, guys. 10 seconds due to implicit wait. After that, it has closed the browser. So the particular test got failed. There is a reason why the test got failed. We'll resolve the issues. Don't worry. Restart account related. I'll give this framework, guys, uh, in the last session of this framework series. Uh, I'll give you this uh, link to this downloading this framework from the GitHub or something. Okay. Uh, don't worry. Just follow the sessions for now. Such related tests are running, guys, as you can see. All the scenario, all the scenarios from all the features files got run successfully, guys. Okay. So. If you go to this JNIT tab, you can see which got failed. You see login with invalid email and valid password. No such uh, element exception. Unable to locate the element. Uh, alert is missable. So you are getting a different text maybe. The reason behind that is even though you are entering an invalid email address. Okay. Here, even though you are entering an invalid email address here. Where is that? In the login, right? Uh, that got failed in the login, right? Yeah, JNIT. Uh, yeah, login with invalid. Okay. This one got skipped actually, you see. Your account has been created, but was a uh, register account. Okay. Okay. We'll see. We'll resolve the issues. But it, but our framework is working fine, guys. Okay. The scenarios need to be implemented properly. That's it. Okay. Login login with uh, invalid email and valid password. Uh, where is that? This one, guys. Okay. Login with uh. Invalid email and valid password.
you see why it's failing means there may be a security issue guys okay sometimes there is security issue that will come okay when you try to use the same invalid uh, email to okay so invalid email address if you give the same invalid email multiple times you'll get a different you see first time you'll get no matching for something okay then also you'll get second time also same warning message third time also no match for fourth time no match for fifth time no match for sixth time you see this time you got a different warning message same thing may be happening in that case also here you may be verifying for some other thing and you are getting something okay this warning message may differ okay uh that is uh it may not be no match for email and password every time. So it, uh, sometimes it may be like this warning message. Okay, warning your account has exceeded a uh, unload number of login attempts may come. To overcome that problem, I have to solve this with a different way. That is, I should not be taking the email address, invalid email address. I should not be taking, where is that login dot feature? I should not be taking this invalid email address from here. Okay. This is not the correct way. So what I will do is user enters invalid email address into the, I'll make it dynamic. Okay. And not pass any invalid email address. Anyhow, it should be unique. Every time I have to give a new invalid email address. Okay. New invalid email address I have to give. If you are giving the old invalid, sometimes you will not get the same message. You'll get this message to avoid this. You have to give every time you have to give a different invalid email address. So how to do that? So for doing that, Here to enter, I will not passing. I am not passing this password. Okay, I am not passing this invalid email text here. Okay, so I'll remove this part. Invalid email. Okay, so I'll remove this part. So, and here, so here I'll create a method, guys. Okay, I'll create a method for now. Where I want to create this uh, method, I'm just thinking. So for now, I'll create this method inside this login only. So public void get timestamp get email timestamp email. Stamp. get email with the uh, timestamp okay this method okay just give any name for this method you will understand the what is the purpose of this method here i'll create date date is equal to new date this is going to generate a date guys okay so over the mouse import this date from io cucumber not cucumber guys sorry over the mouse, a date from java.util package. Here I will say return date dot to spring date dot to spring convert this date to spring then replace that date with uh, if there are any spaces in the date replace that with underscore. I'm just creating a timestamp guys nothing more than that dot replace using this uh, date uh, Thing in Java programming, I'm creating, I'm returning a spring which contains a timestamp with email timestamp kind of thing. Replace a colon with underscore in the timestamp. Okay. And here I have to append like this. Okay. Double quote a motor e this is a plus plus and I'll say at the rate gmail.com like this i'll create an email and return here i'll say string whoever is calling that method will get a motory some date timestamp at the rate gmail.com okay we'll get it so simply call this method it will generate the email time timestamp okay so here in, instead of passing a invalid email text from the feature file directly call this method it will generate a new email timestamp and uh, it will be unique guys every time and it will be invalid every time okay with the timestamp if you are creating an email means it will be invalid every time this is the thing guys, the same thing, let's run the test again, close all, go to the runner, right click, run as JNE test. Let's see what will happen this time. If any errors, we'll troubleshoot them, don't worry. Login tests are running.
restart test are running. Four scenarios in the restart test should run. One completed. Login test successfully passed, guys. Uh, it has not halted anywhere. Second. Third. Such tests are running. Yeah. Looks like all the tests got passed. Okay, some tests didn't get run actually. User creates an account only with mandatory fields. Comparison failure expected your account has been created, but was register account. Okay. So what's happening here? The problem here is. You see it's failing guys, okay? Basically what's happening is, I'll tell you what's the problem. Why it's failing, I'll tell you. So if you go to this uh, restart feature, here also every time you are giving the same email address. This should be dynamic, right? When you are creating an account, this should be dynamic. You should not be passing this email guys. So remove this email, don't pass the email anywhere. Okay, don't pass the email anywhere. Do for duplicate email, don't, don't worry, you can pass it. But remaining scenarios, you have to pass a new email, new email. So that's the problem. To overcome that problem, what you have to do? Go to the restart.java and here, when you are entering the email here, okay, don't take it from the data map. It should be a new email always, new new email, okay? Unique email should be there. That will be the timestamp, okay? Timestamp email. For that already in the login.java, you created this method, right? Uh, copy this method and uh, is the same method in the restart.java. So here, We'll call this method guys, okay? We'll call this method. So it will create an, it will enter a new email address every time. Otherwise, what will happen? You'll get a heading, but uh, it will be the register account heading page, heading you are getting, okay? That's the problem. Uh, try to put, you see this heading is coming instead of, because you are getting a warning message here. So you are stuck in this page. Your account is not getting created because the duplicate email error may be coming, okay? Because of that reason, uh, the assertions are failing here. So I'm just uh, giving the same, I'm trying to generate a new email every time. Okay. When you take it, try to create an account. So let's see whether it will work this time or not. Right click run as Jenny test. Mostly it should work guys. Okay. Every scenario should work fine this time. Okay, some exception came this time. Don't know what's the reason. One test got failed, it seems. Let's see. What is the issue here? Login with invalid email. Okay, I got the issue. The reason here is we have provided the same method here in both the step definition classes, right? Maybe duplicate email that is coming. I'll just make it private here. For now, I'll just make it private here also. Private to this class. So any other errors we are getting? Creates a duplicate account, okay. Okay, for user creates a duplicate account, uh, that step is not being entered. Okay, so understood. One more thing is going wrong here. We are passing here, but uh, there is no particular class having that method. Okay, uh, doing something. User enters the details into the below fields. 
is coming, but uh, duplicate email is not there. Okay. We can do with the duplicate email. I'll just change the step a bit. Okay, so I'll create one more uh, method like this to overcome that problem. Here, I'll just give this name as a uh, user enters. Below fields with duplicate email. Let's paste it here, fill this with underscores. Separate step I'm creating for the duplicate uh, scenario. And uh, here, email should be there and the earlier email is not required here. Okay, this is fine. So here, we'll be getting the email from the data map dot get off. That is email, I guess. It's email, okay. Copy this and paste it here, done. Now save all, let's close and just run this time. Some issues are coming guys, I'm just resolving, resolving them one by one. Because one of the scenario is passing the email, other scenarios are not passing email, okay? So we have to create duplicates, uh, duplicate methods, having that extra thing and uh, without that extra thing. Without credentials, by test got passed in the login, register account related tests are running. You see email with timestamp is being entered in the first scenario. Account got created. My all fields, again, timestamp email is coming. Third scenario, duplicate email. Yeah, it's working. You see this time everything is working fine guys, okay? Search related scenarios are running. One, second search scenario, third search scenario. And go to the JNIT to see the results. Still one is failing. Undefined step exception, the step user enters invalid email address into the email field is undefined. Okay. Which one that is? Under login, it is there. User enters invalid email and valid password. Enter, okay. Oh, this is undefined, it is saying. Okay, user enters invalid email address. So here you should not pass this one, guys. Okay, you should not pass this invalid email address. You see the step is identified now. Okay, user enters invalid email address. Okay, this step is already implemented. It's okay, understood. Close all. It will work fine. This time everything should work fine. Five scenarios from the login, four scenarios from the uh, register, three scenarios mm -hmm. from the search. That is total five plus four plus three. That is 12 scenarios should work fine.
such related tests last two such related tests will run now the last one last scenario of the such dot feature file will run done let's go to jnit and see this time everything got passed okay every scenario got passed we have modified the script so that every script scenario will pass okay we have rectified all the issues and errors things are working fine okay so this is a so far created framework guys so you can see that driver factory under the fact factory package my hooks under hooks runner class under runner this step definition class under step definitions and this feature files under the features folder of the src test resources okay this is the things these are the things so far guys okay so with this note, we have implemented uh, uh, the methods of the step definition class by writing the Selenium code. Then we have created the hooks and driver factory and runner class, okay? And we have run the tests also, created hooks. Then what else we have done? Created dri uh, driver factory for initializing the browser and all those stuff and to get the driver. And then next one is, uh, Anything else? Runner class. Create a runner class and run, run test. Okay. So, so far, this many things we have done in this part two, guys. Okay. These are the things we have done in the part two. So, we'll continue this framework, guys. There are a lot of other stuff we have to do in this framework. So, we'll continue with the things, okay, in the next parts. So, that's all for this session. See you in the next part. Bye.